The mining craze has come and gone, or at least for now, and GPU prices have fallen a little bit, or at least Pascal have, as RTX tends to be the almost overly hyped, underly performing, overpriced piece of technology that you kind of don't want in your system at the moment unless you've got that much money and Pascal looks to be the better option overall. And with that in mind, I wanted to test the GTX 1070, which is in the Steam hardware survey at least fifth place, just below the 750 Ti and above the 960. And at around 250 to 275 pounds, should you still buy one? Hey guys, my name's Ryan Thomas with Failtech, and this is the GTX 1070 in 2018 and beyond. Firstly, I want to cover the base standard edition card and how my EVGA for the win unit differs. Frame rates and results shouldn't be massively different as I won't be overclocking for the purposes of this video, but it's still worth mentioning that I have a slightly different unit. As you can see, CUDA core count, memory capacity, speed and bus width are all the same. However, my for the win card has some clock boosts and an additional eight pin power connector for overclocking with its more advanced power delivery system. If we compare these to the 1066 gig model and GTX 1070 Ti, we'll see that the core count sits closer to the 1070 Ti as expected, and most other specs are shared with that Ti model, but you can see that the 1070 is significantly more stacked than the 1066 gig, which means that whilst the 1066 gig is IMO the best 1080p card, the 1070 is just going to suit QHD and UHD that much more. Also with that extra 33% VRAM and significantly wider memory interface, we'll see better performance at higher resolutions. This card looks really, really good IMO, and there are plenty of different versions, but this EVGA one just looks the bomb in my opinion. The power connector, or in this case, connectors plural, tend to be on the side of the card, something to think about when looking at your case configuration, and obviously this one takes two of those. IO consists of a single DVI, three display port, and one HDMI, but some variants do come with two HDMI for VR but most cards will come with a single HDMI, so it's worth mentioning. Before we talk about performance and numbers, I wanna talk about price because at RRP or MSRP, the pricing was actually quite good and it hasn't dropped significantly from there, but for a long time, this thing was very, very much above that MSRP or RRP. And that means that we've got actually a pretty decent deal going into 2019. You see, this card comes in at between 250 and 300 pounds and the same in dollars because of taxes and stuff. And I find this to be a really, really good position for the card in the market because you pay like an extra 50 to get the 1070 Ti, you pay an extra 100 for the 1080, or you can actually drop a lot of money and go with a 1066 gig. Now I feel like the 1070 is sitting that much further than the 1066 gig is a little bit hit and miss because in some ways the 1066 gig is a lot better of a value, but of course you, if you really wanna step up those higher resolutions, you're probably gonna have more money to spend on monitors and indeed the better card. The test bench I use to benchmark the card consists of an Intel i7 8700K, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3000 megahertz, and all the tests will run from games installed on a SATA based SSD. This PC was built as a hybrid system mainly for video editing and some gaming, and yes, I know I need more memory, but for gaming, I feel like most 1070 buyers will just have 16 gigs on average. Right, the meat and potatoes, the performance numbers. I tested 10 games across two resolutions. The GTX 1070 is meant to sit around the QHD range for performance, but I really wanted to test out the UHD 4K capabilities to see if it could hang with the big boys. I also changed the settings to medium high for QHD and low medium for UHD, just to give it a fair chance. The first game in the test suite, Ashes of the Singularity, showed that high settings really do cripple frame rates. However, at UHD 4K, we saw an average of over 60 FPS on low settings, sitting around 90 in my testing. I was actually really surprised by this. It's awesome, I tested specifically Ashes for its awesome utilization of GPUs for benchmarking. 
Next up is Rise of the Tomb Raider. UHD Medium did see an average FPS of a smidge below 60, which isn't incredibly desirable, but still playable nonetheless. Stepping down to QHD saw a great jump to 90 FPS average. I'm sure if you drop those settings, you could get easily 120 FPS. I actually really like how this game looks, even at 1080p, but the 1070 handles Rise of the Tomb Raider just fine at QHD. Following that is one of my favourite games of all time, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Made on a terrible and ageing engine, we still get playable frame rates with no issues. There are some inconsistencies there because the Source engine is actually pretty hard to benchmark. However, I see a lot of people playing this game on high refresh rate monitors with a good CPU to handle all those frames, so I feel like this card's not too bad for that. I wanted to try Dirt Rally because I never get tired of that flat 4 powered monster in the demo and the sound is just incredible. And even with an aged engine, it's a very good looking game. UHD Medium saw an average of over 115 FPS, meaning that you could crank those settings and still get excellent frame rates. And the QHD Ultra had an average of over 100 FPS and that's completely acceptable in my opinion. And across the board, minimum frame rates are impressive to say the least, barely dipping below 90. So because Alex has made me play Fortnite recently, I thought it would be a good game to benchmark on the 1070. UHD high resulted in averages of over 60 FPS with very consistent minimums and maximums, and at QHD Ultra we saw averages of 86 FPS with minimums never really dropping below 60. I'm not entirely sure if high refresh rate monitors are wanted by Fortnite players, in which case you kind of want to step down those settings a little bit. Otherwise the game has actually grown on me and seemed to play pretty smooth, however I don't really play it competitively like I do CSGO. Forza Horizon 4, the newest game on this list, is an incredibly well optimised game and the best looking game in my opinion. At UHD medium, averages were well above 60 FPS, an incredible feat for a card not known for its performance at these resolutions, and at QHD Ultra, we're seeing averages of 78. And by the way, those minimums are still over 60. I was really impressed with the scoring, the game just looks stunning. Next up is Overwatch, a game that a lot of my friends have been really into recently. Even my girlfriend Katie has been really excited to play it, and aesthetically the game is stunning, and is very well optimised in my testing at least. UHD High resulted in 60 FPS and no issues whatsoever, and the same can be said for QHD Ultra. Now as you can see here, FPS numbers were capped at 60, and that's because screen tearing became really kind of gross on here, so to save my eyes I had to limit, but if you were to take the limit off, I feel like you could get near enough 150 FPS with QHD Ultra. Rainbow Six Siege is a game I never really got into, but I know a lot of people play. Minimum FPS counts aren't looking great at UHD Medium, but averaging just below 60 means that if you move those settings just a bit down, you're going to get better playable frame rates. QHD High, however, saw averages of 90 FPS or above, making for more than playable experiences. And of course, a lot of people will like to play this game on high refresh rate, and in this case, maybe 1080p High would be a better option. The most obscure one on this list, Formula 1 2017, is a game I've actually been enjoying recently, and also one that seems to play nicely at high resolutions. UHD 4K at medium saw very consistently playable frame rates, and QHD Ultra gave us more than enough frames for an exceptional and fluid experience. Grid 2 looks better than expected, and with many a lens flare in both UHD and Quad HD, average frame rates were above 150, and that was the norm, even with crashing, sparking, flaring the lot. So with all that data in mind, the GTX 1070 seems like a pretty good card, no? Definitely. If you're like me and you like ultra-wide displays, this card is gonna be quite good for you because either in 2560x1080 or 3440x1440, 1440 you're gonna get more than playable frame rates. I personally play it QHD wide, and I find it to be really, really good on like most games at high to ultra settings. If we look at things from a value perspective, it sits a lot closer to the TI model in price than it does in performance, and the 1070 Ti is actually quite a bit more powerful, even before overclocking. If, like many of you, you are playing at 1080p, don't buy a 1070, 
buy a 1066 gigabyte because you're gonna get much more value for money and you're gonna get a much better experience in terms of your pricing. Maybe you can go and step up, buy some more RAM, buy a better monitor, buy a better mouse. You're just gonna have that extra cash. Or if you don't have the cash at all, don't be looking to save up for a 1070. I would recommend the 1066 gig, the 1070 Ti, the 1080 Ti, no other card. Because out of context, yes, the 1070 is an excellent card. I'm not gonna switch from it. I think it's fantastic. My EVGA unit is awesome with the RGBs and everything like that. But if you're considering a new graphics card and you don't have anything at the moment, or what you have right now is absolutely out of this range of cards, consider going with the 1070 Ti or 1066 gig because the 1070 at its current price doesn't really make much sense, even if it is a fantastic card. And that's it from me, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please do like, dislike, comment, and subscribe if you're new and tier two, never miss a video like this one. Also check out my social media and Discord. All links will be in the video description as always. I want to thank my patrons for your amazing continued support. You guys are awesome. Again, I've been Ryan Thomas for Failtech, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.